Stop fucking calling me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm creating right now. <laughs> so much everyone for tuning in this is another episode of the scoped exposure podcast um we're in season three of the podcast right now and a big goal of mine for this season was to the kind of you know we've interviewed a lot of people within within the hardcore scene and like some of those things but i wanted to broaden out the genres a little bit more and kind of get to the people that um that still touch those worlds but like play in their own lanes uh respectively and uh really recently i got the pleasure of seeing citizen um come up through calgary and um it dawned on me to reach out to matt and here we are um to have matt on the podcast so without further ado matt from citizen thank you for joining me on the show thanks for having me absolutely so, uh, Matt, uh, before we get into all the music chats, uh, we, we were having a bit of a preamble before uh, we hit record. We have to do a Bev check or a beverage check uh, for the episode. So uh, it's tradition for the guests to go first. So tell me what you're going to be sipping on for the episode. So I have a jug of water. It's a gallon. One or I think over a gallon, actually. No, no, it's a gallon. So I... I'm uh I've been recording all day, which my uh, water intake and my eating habits go downhill. So I, I need to I need to crush this. Mm-hmm. But also, my wife is bringing me home a caramel frappe from McDonald's. So. Oh, very nice. That's that's your uh, <laughs> that's your reward for for doing this podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if it's just the distortion of your camera, but uh, is that water jug bigger than your face? It yes. looks ginormous. It's 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 fucking <laughs> huge. So yeah, <laughs> Amazon. A- so. Amazon. Yeah, I guess that's the and place it, to get oversized water bottles. It's got like cute little. You've got it. Don't stop. Let's get it. Keep drinking. You know, oh, okay. Motivated, there's know, some so. there's some mojo points on there. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. cool. Uh very very much something that I should look into because I just always am with. I'm I'm a constant crusher of like liquid deaths and like canned water, but not like right. the giant water jug where it's like I'm keeping up with two of those a day. Did you get that because yeah. you were struggling in the same way? Yeah, because it's kind of like there's there's no guessing. It, there's no guessing, and there's no like grabbing a new drink or a refilling glass of water. It's kind of like I wake up and then I fill up my jug and then it's like all right by the end of the day this has to be gone mm. you know so it kind of just makes like it's like ease of use type thing streamlining the the water drinking yeah. process you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. yeah so where where are you not like are there days where you get through it at like 2 p.m and you're like oh i i need to top up a little bit more or y- yeah it usually it depends on uh the intensity of a workout or if I'm doing Muay Thai that day too, you know, cause if you're doing a two a day, you know, you're going to, you're going to crush more water than normal. You know what I'm right. saying? So, yeah. Well, but. you're, you're, you're twisting the gears in my head of, of things that I need to buy on Amazon after this podcast. Um, yeah. but I am not drinking anything water related. I'm drinking a, uh, so this is a canned beer from a brewery up here in Canada called 33 Acres. And I was just visiting some friends who were in town um, and they had like a new thing called a Spritz Paradiso is what it's called. And it's got like just kind of like a, you know, it's a, just an aluminum can with some dots and it's grapefruit flavored. So that's what I'm rocking after a very long day and very excited to be chatting with you. So that's what I'm up to. Fancy. Yeah. Fancy. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's definitely been podcasts this season where it's like, I just have like a basic sparkling water, but this might be one of the fancier bevs to check 
with uh, so by the end of this are you just gonna be trashed uh, I did just crush some um, some uh, <laughs> veggie dumplings and Brussels sprouts just before, so I think I'll. Be oh, here we go. We're okay. good. All right. Uh, well, Matt, cheers to you, my friend. Really excited to do this pod with you. Thank you very much. Here, I'll uh, I'll cheers you as well. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So, Matt, I don't know if you got to check out any of the prior episodes, but um, any new guest that comes here on the show, I always like to kind of get you know the the origin story when it comes to music with the person coming on. So I know you've done a plethora of other guests, so you can either do the Coles notes version or the super long version, however you want to spin it. But tell me like the first time that you were either hearing, you know, alternative hardcore DIY music, however you want to spin it. So I, I feel like my entry into music when I was a kid is, was really like, Lincoln Park, like the first, when I first um, discovered Lincoln Park, that was the first time that I had like a musical idol, right? Like Chester Bennington. I was like, whoa, like I, I want to be this guy. You know what I like? Like, I like this guy is so cool. And um, yeah, I, I would say that Lincoln Park got me into, my main instrument is drums, right? Mm. So um, from there, I... I discovered Slipknot and then I really loved Joey Jordison and I started playing the drums. So, um, more than singing, you know, and, um, yeah, Lincoln Park, dude, mm -hmm. Lincoln Park. Were you watching those? Um, cause I think we're about the same age. I'm almost 30 as of a couple months. Um, oh, cool. I'm, I'm 28. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're a couple of years younger than me, but for me, it was always watching, like don't stay or forward or any of those songs tied to some kind of like like anime or some kind of fighting kind of thing was that or you were just listening to the records themselves so it was mainly like uh the band themselves I, you know i i know that um they they do all the anime shit but i'm not too big in the anime you know uh i i think the vibe is cool but right. i'm just not I'm not like the biggest anime fan, but um, no, I was just more so about the band themselves. And um, I was a part of the uh, Lincoln Park street team when uh, they first released Hybrid Theory. And uh, um, it was cool because I got, or I guess this is a sad story, but I got a, a letter in the mail from Chester Bennington, supposedly. <laughs> okay. But, you know, like it was... <laughs> It was signed Chester and it was pretty much like, oh, thanks so much. You know, not that they were, they were still fucking huge, but right. you know, it was definitely like in the start of their meteoric rise. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was like, oh, thanks so much, blah, 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 all this stuff. It was like a big note and it was written in pencil. Oh, I, I erased a little bit of it just cause I was like, is this pencil? And I was really young at the time. Right. And I was like, whoa, like this is real. And I'm put it on my wall right and uh so um when uh i was very when i was younger like uh rap versus rock like you couldn't you couldn't be a fan of both you know <laughs> right. when, I, when i was like nine however old i was mm. and uh, so lincoln park released reanimation with the jay-z and i felt betrayed I thought, even though it's funny to look, because now, because Lincoln Park, they're like rapping and shit. You know what I'm saying? But like, right. at the time, I was like, no, right. this can't happen. And I It's cried. like Mike Shinoda can rap, but we can't have Jay-Z on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, and I I felt betrayed and I cried and I was so mad and I ripped up the note from Chester, threw it away in the trash. And uh Yeah. I really wish that I did not do that. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I've heard you tell the story on on some other podcasts I've listened. to. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty. It's it's a pretty good one, honestly. Yeah. It's so it's so stupid, you yeah. know. It's so stupid. But even but, to this day, like you don't, you're still not a hundred percent sure whether the the note itself was handwritten by him or not. I, Nor I just, are you might you ever find out. Yeah, I, I'll never find out. I don't think it. It was written in pencil, signed by Chester Bennington,
but it's like if 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 really you know what I'm saying? dozen of of street team people like do you think he's actually right like i don't yeah know. yeah i i don't think so i yeah. don't think so but you know i'm just i i hope so but i don't deep down in my heart i don't think so you right. know so yeah so but that's what they faked it as so i'm gonna claim it right <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah i i remember you were you're telling that story and it's just like that is something just with how this music culture has evolved over the years where it's like not like it's not even thought of anymore where like street teams um are even like a part of of what it is so it's like i don't even know no, what a citizen no. street team would even look like in today's right. day and age i mean street teams it was pretty much just like spread the word right and now now everybody has the internet so it's right. like the internet is the know, street team the street you know people posting about your songs on their Instagram stories. Like they're on the street team, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. and yeah, things are crazy now, but I, I do think um, fan oriented stuff is really cool. Um, like turnstiles being, bring it back. They, they're, they're posting those videos and it's just all fan centric. And I think it's cool. You know, it makes people feel like they're a part of something and, I mean, I used to watch the Slipknot uh, Disaster Pieces DVD all the time, you know, mm -hmm. and the beginning of that DVD is them like walking the line and interviewing Slipknot fans and all that shit. And uh, I just think that's pretty cool. So, yeah, um, it kind of seems like people are starting to take those old ideas again and bring them back to life. And uh, it's like really those turnstile videos are so sick to mm -hmm. watch the live recaps. They're awesome. They just make you feel good, you yeah. know, so. Yeah, it's like very similar. I think it's 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 kind of similar to a a big thing when I was getting into this whole thing was like I would watch tons of like band documentaries and they were all like super DIY and it was like like I think specifically it was like Parkway Drive when they would like showcase like them playing to like 10 people and then they would be interviewing their friend and then it like kind of creates this overall lore about this band yeah. versus just the four or five members. Well, people want to people and like people want to grow with bands too, right? Like, you have a lot of bands um, that'll they just pop up out of nowhere with major label backing, and all of a sudden they're opening for, you know, I'm not gonna name drop, but they're opening for huge bands and all, and the fans don't like feel connected to it, right? Or right. people, you know, the fans, the people don't feel connected to it, and. Um, it's really cool to, you know, or like when when people come up to me, and not that Citizen is the biggest band ever, but like when people come up to me and they're like, hey, like, oh man, like I was here in 2012 when you guys played my friend Johnny's living room, mm -hmm. you know, like that kind of stuff is cool. And yeah, I think documenting that, I wish I would have documented stuff like that, but I'm not. I'm always getting yelled at by my family. I don't take enough photos on tour. <laughs> I, 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 I'm never take because every time we're doing something, it's like everybody else in my band is always taking photos. So it's like, well, I guess if I want to photo that, I could just text Nick later. Right. And then I, <laughs> right. and then I forget. And then I forget. You know. Right. But like, yeah, I don't know. I, I I do wish that I was a bit better about that yeah. kind of stuff. But so you could have those Parkway Drive moments, right? I sure. guess so. Yeah. Well, you know, to, to talk about the early days of Citizen and document it here on the podcast, you know, you know, better late than never. Um, talk right. to me about like the very beginnings of Citizen or even if we go even further back than that, because you mentioned that, um, you know, you're a drummer kind of first. And I was listening to when you were on um, Shane Told's podcast where you're like, I got to a point that I just couldn't play drums anymore i didn't want to do with all the logistics and then i started to sing in the band so talk to me about like the f the early bands that you were playing in and then that transition point yeah so it was just like local like uh like metalcore like um like under oath to, it was like I mean, it was, it was just all over the place. We had, you know, it was, it was like very local band, like local band, like, oh yeah, here's our fucking heavy song. You know, here's our heavier song. 
here's our emo song, here's our alternative song, here's our, you know what I'm saying? We were kind of just like, you just don't, you, you, you didn't know who you were, you right. know? You're just like right. a band of a bunch of, what's going to work? I'm going to write this kind of song. And um, You were yeah. like a compilation band. Pretty much, you know, yeah. there was all, there was always the the, um, you know, the overall um, vibe of like scene. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, emo scene, screamo, metalcore, yeah, like that era. You know what I'm saying? And uh, but you know, there there was just you're just you're just young and you're just making making music. Everything sounds cool when you're that age. You know, like it's. It's kind of cool. Um, I might be getting lost a little bit here, but like, you, I'm like, I'm recording right now, and you know, and and I think, and I think, and I think, and I'm like, oh man, like, no, that's not good. And then I'm scrapping things. Scrap. When you're like young, it's kind of just like, oh, I wrote this. I'm using it. You know what I'm right, saying? It right. needs to come out. Everything is cool to you, and so yeah. When I was drumming for bands, that was that was the vibe of it, and. Um, yeah, it, I love drumming, but I, I hate I hate traveling with drums and put in. Not that I was even doing like crazy traveling, but just driving ten minutes to the local venue, right? Packing your shit up in the the van and then forgetting things at the venue or just you know whatever. It just sucks. So, um, and it's expensive. Drumming is very expensive. So, mm. I uh, I said uh, fuck this and. I quit the band and I started uh citizen. So, yeah. Well, well better at like such a small level versus a citizen level where you have to do it like, you know, like over half the year and you're like, fuck this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I always wanted to be a, you know, I always wanted to be a singer first. Cause you know, I've, like I said, I, I idolized Chester Bennington before, before I, uh, started before i picked up on the drums so yeah it kind of, maybe it was like a full circle moment starting <laughs> who knows you know I, yeah. I don't really know yeah do you think because you have that drumming background like that rhythmic um side of you kind of affected like when you were singing onto the mic because that has you know you think of there's so many there's so many examples where people have made that switch like like Jamie and Code Orange moving to just doing vocals now, but like the the punchiness of like matching certain uh, hits of the drums is still super apparent, at least from from my ears. So, did yeah. you did you feel like you wanted to lean into that, or were you trying to push against that and try to learn new ways to do that? No, I think I feel like learning the drums. Um, first i know i you know like or whatever like having that be the primary thing for a while um has helped the process of songwriting significantly you know mm. i i'm the main songwriter for citizen and i do all the stuff for my solo stuff and not to discredit anybody in citizen i i provide the bones of a song and then we all build, you know what i'm saying but um i just I feel like uh, being able to, especially for the new Citizen record, because Citizen is a very like mid-tempo band, and generally, and um, for the the new for Life in Your Glass World, it was kind of like, oh, like I need to change this up, like I I feel stale, you know. And what I did was I just went back to the drums. I was like, what are some literal what are some bpms i've never written a song to you know right. before and what are some drum lines i've never and it ended up being like i would start every song with a drum line and then it it was all it's almost like the the new citizen songs are like uh like a drum machine type vibe because it literally started with me just doing a simple beat and then writing the song around that beat and as I built it and built it, I was like, Oh, like the rhythm of this is very nice. And I don't have to, I don't have to do like big things to make a song interesting. It's just, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of like the vocals really on the new citizen record, especially really uh, play into the drums. Like you're saying, I guess, you know, with code orange and stuff, which 
I would absolutely agree with. Um, I I think I think it just knowing starting with the drums has made the songwriting even before that in general just way easier, right? Gotcha. So I think that's your question. No, yeah. I, I, I tend to talk and then I just I don't really remember what the question is you know what i'm saying yeah but it is very interesting where it all kind of you know loops back to the drums and the drums are definitely like it sounds corny but it is like the driving part of the song you know if it's starting with that like mid-tempo like that like this is this is we're setting cruise control and this is where this song is going um but if it's if if it's driving and it and the bpm number is like higher and higher like that It it kind of felt like the lot when I saw you guys when you were up here in Calgary. It's like there's kind of like, yeah, there's like that mid tempo and then there's the up tempo stuff. And so has that been like challenging to kind of balance that in a set? Yeah, yeah, especially songs off off the record as you please. The album is so slow and so, but it's very boo. It's very big. The album yeah. is big, but it's very mid tempo and it's those songs are a struggle live in terms of crowd reaction right like i know that people enjoy it or hopefully they do but when we play those songs but it's nothing like when we play i want to kill you or roam the room those faster songs death dance it's just death dance is always the high point in the set almost every night you know and that's just because of the groove, mm. uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I I kept that in mind big time when uh, the writing, because touring on As You Please was brutal. It almost broke up the band. Mm. We were miserable and the show, the shows were well attended, but they were so like, I don't know. You just felt like a loser. I, don't know, I really know how to describe it. It was just a, the As You Please touring cycle was a dark time for the band. <laughs> For sure, you know, so, um, yeah, so, uh, um, yeah, we definitely struggle. We, 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 Jet is a good song live usually, and, but we, we, we try to mix it in and mix others in to, you know, for the diehards and stuff, but it's, sometimes it's brutal when it's like lit, 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 oh, this is awesome, great show, and then you play Control or song, song, <laughs> song like that, and everybody's just like, and I'm like, oh god, I can't believe this is over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. So, like, like that, and and I felt like the set that you guys were playing in Calgary, like it did have that nice balance. It felt like, oh, like there's 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 different movements to this. So it's like, oh, like we're back into the dancey stuff, and then we're kind of going to there. Um, but I want to jump back to what you were saying about like, you know, doing that that tour like doing the touring on as you please it like it it was like a a challenging time for the band and i've heard you say on a couple other podcasts just talking about band morale um and how like there were certain things that you guys had to do or decided to do to kind of like you know put fuel back in the in the citizen tank so when did that become a realization because i think that's because there's a lot of people who are in bands who like manage bands uh who are just fans of bands who are listening to this podcast and i think discussing the idea of like band morale versus like oh like it's all good times when we're playing hype shows versus like you know the grind and and all those things so any like when did that become apparent that like you need to kind of pulse check that so citizens weird because we had a we put out our album youth and it was hated on so much and, but the sh- but the shows we were playing were awesome so it was kind of like oh i don't know how to feel cuz everybody everybody's calling us losers but we're doing so well so yeah. are we losers you know what i'm saying so it felt i just think that people like to uh to hate on things that have some steam at the moment you know what i'm saying and then we put out everybody's going to heaven nobody liked it truly nobody liked it Mm -hmm. it wasn't like it wasn't this weird mix of things you know and we felt you know i didn't feel discouraged after that and bamara wasn't bad 
at all when we were touring Everybody's Going to Heaven. Those shows were awesome. And uh, I felt kind of like motivated, but spiteful in a way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I came, when we wrote As You Please, it was kind of like, I mean, the courses on that album are huge, in my opinion. I'm, I'm obviously in the band, so yeah. what am I going to say? You know what I'm Just saying? Just a subtle but, bias. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? But I thought, we writing those songs, I was like, oh, these, these are really good songs. And these are well-written songs. And I'm putting a lot of time into the dynamic of the songs. And I'm, all this stuff, I put a lot of time. We put a lot of time into that. And, um, when, uh, we were, when we released it for one, it doesn't really sound the way we wanted it to sound sonically and, uh, neither did everybody's going to heaven. So that was kind of like a thing. And then, um, when we toured on it and the shows were just well attended, but just dead. It, it's a it's a it's a pretty horrible feeling to uh, be playing new songs that have been out for six months and have nobody care, and then play the summer and have the room ignite. Right, right, right. So that created a lot of resentment. And almost uh, we would start molding our set lists. And this is wrong, by the way. I'm not supporting this. But we, at the time, I was. But we would start molding what we were doing around not giving people what they want. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because it was kind of like, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't even. You know were trying to like force you know, like, it we, on people, like yeah, to, yeah. To like, hopefully oh, you make want them me to do more. You want me to do this? Well, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because because I can. You right. know what I'm saying? That right. kind of thing. And um, band morale was just horrible. We were we turned into haters, which is something we have never been. You know, we were just hating on everything, and so uh, just butter. We were just butter. You know, and uh, um, a lot of that had to do with. Um, a member in the band who was just a horrible person to be around mm. and uh, we kicked his ass out because he sucks but um, not Ryland Ryland's awesome he okay. quit because he got married and you know he's an, he's an adult now and we're just little kids but, but he uh, kind of when we got rid of that guy I noticed that people's moods were better and we weren't talking shit about everything and just the overall vibe was just so much better and band morale and kind of like the unity of uh of citizen felt like it was back because during as you please it was the kind of vibe where it was like if matt leaves the room everybody's talking shit about matt if rylan leaves the room rylan people are talking shit about rylan nick leaves the room people are talking shit about nick we just it just didn't feel like we were a team anymore. Does that make sense? No. Yeah, totally. And, um, you know, and uh, yeah, I, we, we were all burnt out. We toured so much and all the shows were just, you know, well attended, but not exciting. And it just kind of made us feel like we had run our course a little bit. And um, um, I, we were getting hit up by Yvonne, citizens manager, and she was like, Hey, it's time to do a new record. And we were all like, oh, you know, like really? And, and out of spite, I was like, I am going to completely 180. And I started writing citizen songs <laughs> that sounded like Coldplay songs, right? Right. Not citizen songs. But I was like, this is what's going to happen. And um, I sent a song to Evange, and her response was, um, it was, 
because we released a single called Big Mouth Mm -hmm. months prior, which we were very excited about. But um, her response was, you need more songs like Big Mouth, not like this, or, you know, something along (laughs) those lines. And I was already so, so just annoyed and resentful and pissed off and just like, that I was like, okay. And then I wrote, I want to kill you. And I hit everybody with it. And it was like, everybody was like, whoa, this is the vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. this, this is like what we need, you know? And I was like, oh, (laughs) you know? And it kind of felt like, it felt like, uh, like a rebirth of some sorts, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And and now we play um, shows and the, the life in your glass world songs, just they go off harder than the youth songs. And it feels really good to, uh, to not be a sad sack. Anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If, yes. Uh, if that answers your question, it's just yeah. um, the, the spark. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, so, yeah. I think the two things there that I picked up on is when it comes to band morale, making sure that you have the right people in place. And, and that that's something that I've learned through other, like, you know, uh, people that run their own businesses where it's like, if you, if you have a, like a top, if your top salesperson is just like a dick and it's just like bringing down the vibes and just like, you know, no one wants to be around them. Then it's like, just, it's no fun. But like, a lot of people keep those people in place because they just like bring the money in, but like it's a better move as like a leader of anything to remove that person. And then the morale of the entire company will go up. So that, you know, is off the first thing that I picked up and also just having fresh ideas and fresh things to try out that are, you know, you bet on that and then they're received well by your audience at the same time. So, right. Yeah. And and I and I'd like to double back real quick and sure. I, I'm not trying to sound unappreciative by any means. Like the fact that anybody comes to a show is very awesome. But yes. just the whole like uh you know when you put something out that a lot of people like and then you put out two things that people don't really like, it just makes you feel your ego your ego is, is, is hurt a little bit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that, that, that's all I was trying to say. I, I wasn't trying to, I, I do think it's, you know, I am very grateful. For yeah. But, but that, I totally people, get that. Even, even a few people care, you yeah. know? So I, I feel yeah. like, yeah, as a creative, like you want your, you know, uh, your next thing to be like received well. And, you know, right. like speaking as someone that's, listen to citizen like i think youth was the first record that i that found you got found you guys out i didn't like uh everyone's going to heaven when i first heard it but like listening to it a few times like later years it was like oh okay like that's a thing that's a practice for me where it's like if i listen to something and i don't like it immediately i'm like i almost feel indebted to the artist that i need to like like where's your mind going with this i need to like kind of like figure it out you know what yeah, i'm saying give it another shot yeah it's Hey, it's cool to like that album now, you know? Yes. So I don't know, you know, well, whatever. Yeah. People are like, you know, I don't know, but yeah. whatever. I've, it, it feels really good to, you know, take a chance on something and have it be very well received. And you, I feel excited about music and, you know, I've, I fucking, I've been writing so many songs. I just... <laughs> I wrote, I did a new solo album and I've got 16 new citizen songs in the bank. And I just wrote another new solo solo album over the past two months. So I've just, I've just been touring with citizen and our current lineup and our squad and having the shows be really awesome. I mean, we did Western Canada and we didn't, we don't, you know, we don't really go out there much. So we had literally no idea what to expect and the shows were awesome. Mm-hmm. And it was just very, you know, there were moments, there were moments where I was just on stage and just singing and 
I'm just like, I can't believe this is happening right now. It's so cool. I'm like, I just went to Banff earlier today. You know, right. like, I shouldn't be here. I right. should be at, I should be working at McDonald's, you know? So just, it, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, we, we all feel very uh, rejuvenated. And we're actually, uh, in January, we're, we're going to a cabin and we're all going to learn all the new songs. And then we record in February. So is the cabin cool. in Banff? Yeah, I wish. Oh, bro. I, I wish, and everybody else wish. It's actually in Ohio, but it's in it's in uh, respect. Hocking, Hocking Hills, Ohio, which is a pretty cool spot. So okay, I was like, yeah. man, that's like a drive away from me. So I'll I'll go drop off some devs for y'all while you're mid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I always ask this question to any guest that comes on that has like uh, a a big discography as far as like you know uh, multiple LPs to kind of choose from. Um, and I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, Matt. So in your opinion, and you know, we, we all love all the citizen songs, but in your opinion, what is the most overrated citizen song and what's the most underrated citizen song? Oh, wow. I've never been asked this. Let's think overrated citizen song. And as you're thinking about this, I'll just add like this could differ to each member of the band because the guitar player might be like, this song's a little boring to play live and we have to play because it's like the, it gets this crazy reaction. But as the vocalist, I'm curious where your thoughts go. Overrated citizen song. And this does not mean I do not like the song. Probably sleep. I would say. Wow. Okay. Yeah. We're at the top and, of the list. Yeah. And I don't know if this stems from, I've just played it in every single set I've ever played since it was released. <laughs> I don't think we've ever not played it. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, but you know, and it, it's, it's a crowd favorite and it's, and it's fun to play because of that, but right. it's so slow and so short and juvenile and i'm just kind of like i wonder why people like this so much mm. you know underrated citizen song i would say and i'm trying not to be biased by picking things off the newest record so i will say flower child by citizen oh okay um, i fought and lost i wanted that to be a single so bad i was like that's i was like that song is so awesome with this song should be a single it's so awesome you know and i feel like it it's very emotional and i I think the lyrics i think i did i think i i did a great job on those lyrics and they make me feel something and um i feel like that song gets a little swept on the rug by citizen by citizen ourselves so if (laughs) Nick or anybody listens to this, there you go. But we 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 played it. We played it on uh, the As You Please tour, and it's funny how your personal experience is so much different because there were certain songs I just hated playing. You know, I just hated it. I was like, oh man, I would just be dreading it before, during, and after. But when we played Flower Child, I loved it. I was having the best time and I was, and I think that's cause I was just really connecting to it. Right. Sure. But then, but then uh, when it came time for the next tour and I was like, got to play flower child. It was like, Oh man, that was the worst part of the set. Oh. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm having a great time. What are right. you talking about? You know, like, so it's, it's just funny. And it, it, it even goes that way now, not to trail off too much, but like, like we'll play a set and I just had the greatest time. Right. And I thought the crowd was amazing and we played awesome. I was like, man, it's so awesome. I walk off stage and then somebody's like, we sucked. And I was like, what are you talking about? It was awesome. You know what right. I'm saying? But, and then there's shows where I'm like, ah, oh, man, I'm kind of bummed about that. And then everybody else like, what are you talking about? That's my favorite show I've ever played. And I'm right. like, what? <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's just, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Yeah. So. I, yeah. I'm, it's very interesting to me that you've never been asked that. It's like an ongoing thing that I always love to ask on this podcast. So I almost challenge you to That's, ask 
the at the next citizen jam or whatever to the other members because yeah. they might say like the night i drove alone is so boring because we don't play for two-thirds of the song anyways right yeah that's true that they probably would say that but i like that song and i just feel like and i think the whole it's not even like i like i'm really like that proud of that song by any means uh but I just remember, I remember writing it and how just totally emotional and just traumatized I was. And uh, which now, you know, none of that means anything to me at this point in life. But it's just, I just remember the way I felt when I wrote that. And when we play it and it's just like, it's like roaring through the room. It's just like, wow, like. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, like I can't something that I, I wrote when I'm alone and just super upset and bummed, just like the way it connects to other people is very I've I've we play that song. Every time we play that song, I'm like just choking up because I can't even believe how uh what's up? Oh the caramel frat pays here. Oh yes. I didn't want to interrupt. I yeah. really no, we're very excited about it. No, no. Uh, Bev check. Um, Snack check now. Yeah, yeah. But I can't, I just can't even believe that. I guess it's know. a Bev. You're, you got a straw, so. You got a straw. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just, there's been so many times where we play that song. We usually play it as an encore at this point. Yeah. Because it's, it's everybody's favorite song, right? Mm. But, uh, and I just, it makes me choke up, dude. I don't know. I'm just, just like, whoa, like this is so nuts. Yeah. You know? I'm 28 years old and like, this is still happening. It's just very, it's very crazy. I turned into very like a uh, spiteful, butthurt Matt to like very uh, appreciative. I can't even believe this. Matt. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just cause you, cause yeah, I don't know. It's pretty funny. I yeah. don't know. So. Yeah. It, yeah. It is interesting how, even though the music at the time is like uh, a capu- a capsulation of like yourself, it does. It's not like oh, if I play that song, I'm right back there. You know, you're like, you know, no. you're maybe thinking about that, but it's like the fact that it's you know resonates with different people in their own journeys uh, is like that's the the magic of it. That's the magic of it. And that's what I'm thinking about now when I play because I used to be in that mindset of what exactly what you just said. Like, oh, every time I play this, I have to go back. I got to go back, which I think is just too deep. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> it's just too much. Right. It's like, what? But now I feel like a lot of the times when I'm, when we're playing, I'm I'm really like looking out at at people and like trying to like look at their faces and kind of like check their vibe and you know what I'm saying? And uh, when you play things and know you're like, Oh, people sing, people sing this part. What, whether regardless of what song it is, you know, I open my eyes and I like look and when you see somebody just like really connecting and blah, blah. And you're just, that's, magical you know it really is you know it's like it's just pretty crazy you know yeah um on that subject which is kind of interesting is like so citizen kind of comes from this breath of like you know it's like it's not pop punk but it's not like straight it's not straight emo it's kind of this like you guys were kind of in that mix of like kind of in the uh of both of those worlds and obviously like with you know, playing in heavier music and the hardcore connection, like Citizen to me was on this wave of bands where like the term hardcore adjacent started to get entered into the conversation. So now as like the band has been going on and multiple records have been like released, is it strange how you can look out into a crowd and be like, okay, here are all the hardcore kids that listen to youth like way back in the day. And here are a bunch of kids that that have maybe never pitted in their life but they all are coming to our show. Do you see that? Or is, am I just kind of I, making that up? No, no, I see that. And I have no, 
I have no explanation for it. I don't I don't know why we can take restraining order on tour, citizen. We could tour with praise. You know, we can tour with all these hardcore bands and it just works. I don't mm-hmm. I truly don't get it. And I don't because I've never tried to be a hardcore band for citizen, you know, but um I think a lot of it is just uh, like the uh, the energy of the music is you kind of, you can kind of do the same things. People are stage diving to citizen and hardcore bands, you know. So it's like I think I think that's the thing. Is literally stage di- like is that the thing? I don't like you can stage dive to a fast citizen song, and I can stage dive to a restraining order song. So. Right. Why would it be weird if they played together? Because I can act the same. Does that make sense? I, no, like, totally. I, I, I would I, almost I, say that it's like, like I, I watched your Outbreak uh, set uh, from this past year, and it was like just mind-boggling. Just like it was stage dive central. It's just so many people going off. But when you came through Western Canada, I think there was maybe one stage dive. So it's almost like you can so, stage dive to Citizen, but like you don't, at the same time, you don't have to. Something really funny about that Calgary show. Okay. So now that you say that, <laughs> we show up to the sound check, right? Mm. And the sound guy is, you know, doing his thing. And I, I have a, an in-ear monitor set, right? And there's a receiver and it usually goes either up at the board or somewhere behind the drums or somewhere around there. But the guy plugged it in and he set it down right there on the front. And I was like, oh, we, we shouldn't. I was like, I, I don't think we should leave it here because people might step on it. Mm. He was like, why would people step on it? And I was like, uh, w- like usually there's stage divers. And he goes, not in Calgary. You're not going to have any stage <laughs> oh, divers. My. He literally said that. And I was wow. like. I feel I like, like, I feel uh, uh, insulted off of that. Yeah. And, and I was like, really? And he was like, yeah. He's like, at this venue, people don't stage dive. He's like, I'll be surprised if you have one stage diver. No stage divers. You should just leave your monitors there. And I was like, if you say so. And we played. There was no stage divers. That one crowd surfer, right? It wasn't even a stage dive. So, and we've played Calgary before at another Mm -hmm. venue. Were you there? Uh, I don't think. think I I might have not moved here yet. What year was it? I think it was 2013 or 14. Yeah, that was a couple years before I moved here. But... There was a lot of stage divers. So in my I head, think it, when we, I think it's the venue, not to yeah. shit on Commonwealth, but uh, that was a cool venue. The la- yeah, yeah, great maybe's... venue, sounds great. Yeah. The last show that I went to there was, it was Touche, Vane, Scowl, and Military Gun. Um, so it's it's funny. The only time I've seen Military Gun is at that same venue. Yeah, uh, at, at your show, but um. Even when Vane played, it wasn't like crazy stage diving, but like they have played here before and to no stage, but like people were going way crazier. So I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's the venue. So, yeah. Certain venues just, I mean, yeah. I promise I, next time Citizen is here, yeah. it will just be Calgary Stage Dive Central. Hey, I will make regar- certain of that. Regardless of the no stage diving, I thought that show was awesome. Yes. I don't, I, I don't gauge shows anymore by the amount of stage dives, which I used to do that. I literally used to do that. Really, like, one stage dive today. Yeah. Fuck that show. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I, when I'm looking out, if I see people singing along and bobbing their heads, and if I can visibly see people are having a good time, it, it's not a bad show to me at all. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's, and that show I thought it was awesome. So. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, so we were, we were talking earlier about like overrated, underrated songs, and you brought up Sleep. Um, I heard on uh, Shane Told's podcast that you wrote that song in a Taco Bell parking lot. Yes. Or wait, yeah, and how does it feel? Yes. Yes. A Taco, Taco Bell parking lot, yeah. So I had a follow-up question to that. If there's any other unconventional locations spaces that you have written songs aside from maybe a bedroom or a house any weird ones that come to mind 
I wrote, um, I wrote what song off of, uh, everybody's going to heaven in a porta potty <laughs> on warp tour. What song? I think it, I think it was, uh, ring a chain. Um, I had, I had the voice memo, um, of the guitar line before I left. Oh, I thought I you recorded wrote... something in the porta potty, like mid shit. Not mid shit, no. <laughs> but I I needed a place to sing, and I felt weird about singing on the bus. There's too many people on the bus. Sure. And there's nowhere to go on Warp Tour, so I was like porta potty, you know. So I went on porta potty and like recorded the scratch vocals for that. Um, seat, I wrote flowers. seat down, or are you like? I was down? I was sta- I was standing. Oh, you're standing. Okay, okay. But I had my pants at my ankles. <laughs> What you were standing with your pants down? <laughs> no, no, no. I was just standing there. But <laughs> <laughs> the visual uh, of that is fucking wild. Yeah, I wrote uh, <coughs> "Flower Child" on um, GarageBand on my phone on a plane. Under, I was sitting in a seat under a blanket, like uh, you know. So I don't know. Yeah, I wrote "Cement," the guitar line to "Cement." Um, I was in the bathtub and I was like, blah, 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 blah. I was just like mumbling, non, uh, mumbling nonsense. I was like, oh, and I like got up and I was naked. I'm like sitting there like wet, naked with my acoustic guitar and I like, jumped out of the bathtub and like recorded it real quick. Got in the bathtub. <laughs> I love taking baths. I love taking baths and I love hot tubs. I love all things heat. You know what I'm saying? I love saunas. I just... I love it. So mm. I took a bath a little bit ago, right before this. Oh, so. wow. Are you a, a bath bomb or a bath salts kind of guy? Anything I got. Okay. You know, cur- currently, I'm, I am i don't have anything. So I'm just, I'm just bathing. I'm just sitting <laughs> in the hot water. You're sitting you know, in the hot water. But I, you know, I, I exercise a lot and I'm, I'm fucking sore, man. Yeah. I'm taking baths, you know? So. Have you ever done a, uh, like a Nordic spa where you have like, the sauna rooms, the ice, like waterfalls, and then like the hot tubs. I feel like you would like. Yeah, that. we went to. A, yeah, we went to a, a Russian Russian bathhouse in New York. Oh. Back in like twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen or something, as a band, we went and it was it was awesome. I loved it. <laughs> I did a cold plunge um, a few weeks ago, actually, at my friend's gym in Texas. Central Athlete is what it's called. Okay. Stephen Frisch, he's the best. Uh, I did a cold plunge and it was horrible. It was the worst. Heat is so much better than cold. <laughs> yes. You know, it was horrible. So. I will. So there's a, you know, very close to Banff, uh, just like essentially you would pass the turnoff for it uh, because it's like Kananaskis is kind of like the, the highway that like shoots off of the highway that goes to Banff. There's a Nordic spa there that they, it's like a three part thing where it's like, you do like an extreme heat activity. So there's like different things that you can choose from. That's like, I think it's like 15 minutes. And then you do like a, as long as you can, like ice related thing. So it's like either like a shower, or like, a, yeah. like a fucking bucket that you pull. And then there's like 15 minutes of hot tub time. And then you do that cycle, like as many times as you want throughout the day. And I, I straight up like have never felt better in my life after doing that. Like I think I did like three or four rotations of that, and I felt like I was like, I like, I had like new skin and a new soul yeah. almost. So you you feel amazing afterwards. Right. So I, especially with the cold, the ice shit, because it's like shocking your body. You feel. You feel physically better after that. Yes. Than the heat stuff, but it's so brutal. How long did you stay in the ice? So I think I would do like, I would try to do two to three minutes. That's good. Yeah. You're I sad. think there were some times where I'm like, all right, just dip in because I just want to hit the hot tub right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I only two, three minutes. That's a long time. I did a minute in the cold plunge, and I was 
I was like, I, I got to get the fuck out of here. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to die. It's right. like literally how I felt. I was like, I'm, I'm going to die. I have right. to get out. Right. You know, so. But then I felt great the rest of the day. Right. Yeah. So next time you're in town, you just have an off day so you can hit the Nordic Spa on the way. Of course. Way. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Um, sure. So, you know, we were talking like, you know, Citizen has a lot of music. You have a lot of your own music. You were mentioning earlier in the episode that you were like, in two months, you've recorded like three or four albums between both projects. Is there like any downsides to you being so creatively like that's so within your DNA? Is there any downsides to that for you? Uh, I think the downside would be uh, balance with other aspects of life. Yeah. You know, like admittedly I, I'm pretty bad about um and I'm sure a lot of people are this way too, but I'm pretty bad about like uh if I'm if I'm recording or I do other stuff too, like I do I do like a lot of computer based stuff like programming video games type shit. And uh but if I like start a project or start a song or a demo or I cannot focus on anything else until it's done usually. And in turn is, you know, I don't drink enough water. I, I don't eat enough food and I turn, I drink a lot of energy drinks, right? Even though they're not doing anything. I'm just, it's just the placebo of it. And, you know, Shay will come down here and be trying to talk to me and I'm just like, what you know like <laughs> i'm busy you know I'm like right not not that mean but like i'm just kind of like oh yeah 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 i'm like really not listening yeah. and i should i need to be better about that you know but yeah. it's it's really hard to it's really hard when you're just like really in something and anything like my phone will vibrate and i'm just like flip my phone over you know, I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't want to see my phone vibrate. I don't want to feel it vibrate. Toss it on the floor. You know, I don't know. I'll be, I'll get a message from Adobe while I'm on Pro Tools. It literally just got a message from Adobe on my computer right now. <laughs> but uh, it'll be like, you know, you have to update this. And I'm just like. Fuck you. No, thing. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Like exactly. Like literal, little things. Oh, sorry. Little things just annoy me so much when I'm doing this. And I, it's a horrible problem, yeah. you know? So is, I, is it more like you're um, just, you succumb to the zone and you want to stay in the flow and let that next idea yes. hit you? Or is it like, I think so. I'm in the, I'm it's in such a like tunnel vision problem solving mode where I need oh, to finish well, it by this time. I guess maybe a little bit of that, a little bit of it both, you know, okay. I don't, I don't know. It's just, I, I need to, I need to be better about taking breaks and like, okay, I need to stand up and I need to go fucking hang out with Shay and I need to go touch grass, you know? Cause I'm just like, I'm just literally like guitar, keyboard, time to sing you know and then i'm like it's just and then anything else is just like i just want it to be over because yeah. i'm doing this right now you know so it's a it's a bad uh that's uh that would be was that the question you asked well yeah yeah it's kind of like because i think people who are highly creative like like whether they have like a bit of undiagnosed adhd or not like there there is something to be said about people that are wired that way that they're like chasing those curiosities. And, you know, I, I've learned the hard way where it's like I'm laying in bed. I'm like, oh, like I'm thinking of like a, a song. I'm like, oh, I'll remember that in the morning. And then I wake up. I'm like, no, dude, last night I I wrote this song before I went to bed. Right. Or I wrote the idea of a song. Right. And I was like, and I was just like, and it was, you know, 10 I, I, I go to, I try to go to bed kind of early. So like 10, I feel it's like, Oh man, I need to go to sleep. Right. But, um, I did this idea and then I was like, Oh cool. Okay. Well, 
now I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to wake up really early, go to the gym, and then I'll have all day to like work on this song, right? Right. I laid down and I was just thinking <laughs> about this song. I, I was up all night and I didn't get any, and I didn't get any sleep. And I finally went to sleep, woke up at 10 a.m., you know, like, which is not early for me at least. And, right. and I was just like, you know, I, I should have just stayed down here and kept doing it. But right. then where's the, but then that contributes to my already, my issue. Right? right. So it's like, but then in my head, I'm like, well, if I can't sleep, I'm just going to be laying there. Why wouldn't I just be working on something? Why wouldn't I just be being productive? But where's the line? You know what I'm saying? Cause that right. logically makes sense to me. I'm not going to be able to sleep. I'm not, why would I go, why would I stop in the middle of the day and go do something that I don't want to do? Or why would I stop and go to sleep when I'm not going to be able to sleep? Why would, why wouldn't I just do what I want to do at all times? Right. And it's, I guess, in turn, contributing to my career, right? Like what, you know, so maybe that's like a workaholic thing. Like, I don't really know. I don't know. But yeah. I admittedly, I admittedly should be better about it. So, yeah, there is a very, I think you just learn over time where it's like, because I think a, the having a job as a creative is like a, a huge like blessing to a, like a lot of people don't aren't able to to do that but i do think that like that comes with the terror so that comes with the territory of like working like you know okay this is a 14 hour day because like the ideas are just rolling rolling because you know maybe they weren't flowing uh a number of days prior but i do think that there is like a ba like there is a balance to it because for me like in addition to doing this podcast i play in bands i film bands and fests and shows um so for me there's always like a constant thing in the back of my head where it's like a list of things i need to do and it's like my worth as a human is almost like predicated off of my productivity of that day if you know what i mean so it's like i completely I resonate with that for sure. Yes. So like, I'm trying to get better at like, I like, I'm still worthy of a person, but like all I did today was like, I got to hang out with my wife and like take care of my dog and make dinner. And that was it. And it didn't need to have anything creative attached to it. But like right. the other side of the coin that I like try to like have a bit of a handle on is like, I think as if you're, if you're looking at creative things in a long-term way, it's like what I'm always thinking about what did I do today to let like move that needle of like whatever I'm doing just a little bit more, just right. like whether that's editing a video, doing a podcast with you, like things like I'm so obsessed with that. And sometimes like there's days where I do a lot and then there's days that I do just a little, but I'm always at least trying to, be like, okay, well, at least today I did this. That helps me sleep right. better at night. But yeah, it make you feel like you you took a step. Yes. for sure. And I, do you ever experience like um like uh I I don't know I, I don't know if creative burnout is the right word for it, but like me historically, um, they'll just. I'll go six months without ever writing a song or like, I just have no desire, no, nothing, you know, no ideas. I'm not inspired, just nothing. I couldn't. So when I feel like I can do it and I feel inspired, it's like this, like obsessive, like I, I have to do this right now yeah. because if I don't latch on to this right at the second, I could lose it tomorrow. Right. And, because that's and tomorrow becomes two months and four months. and Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and that's happened before where I'm like, oh man, I could write a song and I'm feeling really inspired. And then I'm like, oh, you know, I got, I got a family party, birthday party I got to go to. So I guess I have to shelf this. And then, then you come back and the magic's gone. You don't care anymore. And then, then all of a sudden three months go by and you haven't done a single thing, you know? So 
I think that has a lot to do with it too. It's like if you, if I feel, you know, if I feel like, oh man, like I, because you just know. I mean, I don't know. You just know when you're gonna write a song. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this is all feels right. This feels right, and I know I can do this right now. You know, it's just like this vibe you get. And then there's the vibe where you're like, oh, I don't care at all. I don't care at all. And I'm not, there's no way I could create anything right now. There's just no way, you know? And and I'm afraid of that happening when I'm feeling creative, you know? So mm. it's kind of like, like I just said in like four different ways. I'm just saying, <laughs> saying the same thing over and over again. But, you know, I just like, oh, man, I, I got the feeling. I got to fucking get it, you know? Right. And then everything else is just like, stop. Don't just, I need to focus. My my dad's calling me. I'm like, dad, no. <laughs> stop fucking calling me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm creating right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get it? <laughs> Close the door. Close the door. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So. Well, like that was a very long way to say the same thing over. I just, I pretty much said the same thing a hundred times, but yeah, I, I guess I've just never really thought about it out loud. So I'm like opening this, this box in my own head, right? This <laughs> self-realization, you know what I'm saying? Right. So no. And, and I'm sure a lot of people like listening to this podcast, like have a similar struggle as well, where it's like, and for them it's like you know whether they play in a like a super local band or they play in a big touring band it's like things within like all of our lives like are still going but it's like it almost feels like like yeah like yeah we need to have those times to like it's not it's not like oh i have my two out my hour of guitar time or two hours of like riff time to be able to do these things it's like sometimes i'm like driving and i'm like i need to pull over to fucking like spit this riff into my phone and then when i get home then i'm actually gonna play it like yeah i think that's like super i don't like to me that almost feels cooler than like if i have someone on for an interview it's like how'd you come up with this song it's like oh you know it was a thursday and it was my creative time that i blocked <laughs> off you know well it was 12 o'clock <laughs> and 12 to 1 i always write a song right you yeah know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Like it, it's I, I, way cooler to be able to be like, yeah, I was in the porta potty uh, with my pants, maybe down or not, <laughs> and uh, and I came up with this thing. I think that's yeah. like that's the way it should be. Yeah, I I, I feel like a lot of people are, it's hearing you say that I, that you know I feel like a lot of people are probably like that. You know, right? So. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that in addition to to music, you're uh, you you're you're a nerd. You're a game, game designer, programmer, all those kind of things. Yeah. I'm so I'm I don't play that many video games, but like you make more games than you play games? I'm yeah, I'm interested in um developing games, but there's a downside to that too cuz if I don't know what's what's hot and what's cool, like how am I ever going to make a good game, right? right. But like I I used to play video games all the time. Like, I feel like, like most kids, you know, and, um, I've got, when we were recording as you please, actually, I, you know, I've, I shelved video games when I uh, got into junior high, pretty much when I started making friends and playing shows, you know, and all this stuff. And, uh, um, video games just went away in my life. And, uh, we were recording as you please and will yip, um, he was like, yeah, I got a, got a PS5 in the studio. Pretty cool. I was like, oh, hell yeah. He's like, the new Mortal Kombat game came out. I got it. And I was like, oh. And I used to be a, a huge Mortal Kombat fan when I was a, when I was a kid, right? And well, you got, I was you like, got oh. Gar Garo on, yeah. on the wall. So. Uh, this, <laughs> this is literally my Mortal Kombat room. I have, I mean, you can't see it. I got like busts and sculptures of scorpion and shit all around me but um so you know they're doing they're recording drums or some shit and i'm like oh yeah i haven't played Mortal Kombat in a long time you know and i like put it in there and it was like boop, it turned on and it was like you know what i'm saying <laughs> my head was like i was like whoa 
I like forgot about all this shit, you know? And I was just, so I started playing fighting games and by fighting games of Mortal Kombat. I started playing Mortal Kombat a lot around that time. And then from there, I was like, I want to make my own fighting game, which is impossible for me at least you know i do not possess the skills because but i was just like oh man like how i mean how hard can it be like it's just two characters and you just beat each other's ass you know and uh <laughs> you know i was like that is just so easy i could right. do it and turns out fighting games are one of the hardest games to make because because mm-hmm. if you have horrible ai um for if you're fighting a bot with horrible AI, it's not going to be fun. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I couldn't get it, and it was awful, and it was terrible, and it turned into a, a side-scroller, which is, a you know, like Mario. You know, like yeah, a, yeah. which is a pretty easy – to you know, not easy, but it's easier. It's more achievable, for sure, for sure. A, uh, somebody who doesn't know anything about developing, especially. And um, just from there, I just – started making a bunch of just random shit and i've only ever completed two games um sis fighter one and two which uh are citizen um side scrollers it's it was initially called sis fighter because it was supposed to be a fighting game okay. which which is what i gave up on you know so but i did those two games and uh i put them on the apple app store and stuff i don't think they're on there anymore at this point but um that was pretty cool, and and I've started like five hundred other games. It just literally, I work on it for like a week, and then I, you know, it's such a big, it's such a massive undertaking because it's like making it a game is so cool because it's every form of art like all shoved into one bag. You know, it's mm-hmm. like. Okay, I gotta do character design. I gotta okay, I, I'm done with that. Oh, now I gotta do environmental design. Okay, now I gotta do the sound effects. Now I gotta do the music. Now I gotta write the storyline. Now I have to make it playable and have an interesting you mechanic. Do artwork. You know, I gotta yeah. yeah, I gotta do the artwork. I gotta design the UI. You know, mm-hmm. like the flow mm-hmm. of the interface. Like it's just there's so much and it's so cool. You know, but and. Um, I now when I'm playing a game, it's almost like the fun of the game is taken away because the whole time I'm thinking like, holy shit, how the fuck? This has got to be so hard to make. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like <laughs> thinking like, like if I'm, you know, if, if you got like Legend of Zelda, up, for instance, you know, I don't know. I'm like, I don't really play that, but my wife, Shay, plays that. And then mm-hmm. if I'm watching her play it, I'm like not paying attention to the game. I'm just like, how the fuck did they program that to happen? You know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy. Yeah. But this is kind of. But I think I think that's all very very interesting and cool. And uh, um, it, I I think uh, you know recording as you please and having uh, Mortal Kombat re-enter my life really <laughs> uh, really ch- uh, changed the trajectory me up. Tra- trajectory trajectory of my life in in many ways you know Interesting. um because before that all i cared about was working out and writing music right i had literally no other interests yeah nothing you know i was just like i i get up i work out maybe write a song if i don't i lay around until i work out later or work out the next day and that's right. like my life and then i go on tour you know what i'm saying like but now i just it's opened up so many forms of um, creativity and uh, entertainment. And I'm like, you know, I'm trying to write stories now. I'm horrible at it, but like, it's like, it's just fun, you know, like not, not everything, a a cool realization that I had was not everything has to turn into a, uh, turn into something you show people. Right. Cause like, uh, with a song, for instance, you write a song and you're like, oh, well, you know, my my job is I'm in a band, so like I got to, I'm either going to scrap the song or I'm going to release it on something, right? right? But with 
developing or 3D modeling or writing a short story or a game outline. It's like, I don't, I don't have to do anything with this. I can just have fun doing it and then I can throw it in the trash. Right. Or maybe I'll love it and maybe I could do something with it, but there's no expectations. And it's, it's cool to have like, uh, you know, something to just to do that with. And uh, it's like purely fun. And, um, you know, when you write a song, you kind of think like, oh, are people going to like this? Or am I just being stupid? You know, or like, do I only like this because I wrote it and it's actually not good? You know, like you have those thoughts. And, right. Uh, and yeah, I think you know, you'd have those thoughts with, with anything you do, really. But it's it's like I said, it's cool to be able to, to have some outlets to do things where it just doesn't really matter, you know? And, and if you, and if you do something that you're like, Oh, I actually think this is cool or special and maybe, you know, then, then you got that. And that's awesome. And if not, then who gives a shit? Right. So do you mind if I add something to that? Yeah. So I think something for me that I, especially that I do with this podcast is that like, I, there is maybe only two episodes that I never released. And the 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 one of those was because I knew that I didn't do a good enough job and I was like kind of self-critical of myself and I didn't do it. The other was more so because I thought the guy was kind of just cringe and I was like I I, I misread <laughs> the the um it, I, I knew that it would be worser for for both of us if I put it out. But like yeah. out of the 200 plus episodes I've put out every single thing that I've done. And I know full well that not all of those interviews um, done on my end were like super, super great. And I know not all of those interviews were done on the guest end super, super great. But I think like the process of like documenting and just like putting myself out there and like stepping up to the plate to, to hit the fucking ball is what kind of like builds it up over time to be able to like showcase is like, okay, like I do believe in myself to be able to hit up people, certain yeah. certain people to get on this podcast. So I, I know like, I think I have not, like I, I've played in so many bands over the last 10 years, but like I, I have never been like, like your output is just so much like, you know, 10 X to maybe what I have done. But like, I think there is a process in being able to like, like write, like just, just put something out, like not put something out, but like output something of yourself and then like, look at it. I was like, okay, that's actually really shitty or, oh, that's really, really good. But I also think that there's an element of like putting it, putting something out to the world and letting the people decide because there's plenty of times, as I'm sure, you know, where it's like, this is the song and then the other people are like, no, this is actually the yeah. song. Yeah, and then it's not. Yeah. yeah. Oh, trust me. Trust me, dude. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 200 podcasts, dude. That's a lot of podcasts. So you, that's awesome. <laughs> what is you know? the, what's the song system-wise that you thought was going to catch, but just never did? I guess like you, you mentioned uh, uh, Flower Child. Yeah, that song. Um, which like that, and which song did you not expect to to pop? Let's see. Oh, "Yellow Love." I did not expect that song. People love that song, and mm-hmm. I'm like, how? <laughs> not that I don't. Not that I don't like that song. I actually like that song, but like, what? I just feel like. You know, I just feel like it's not as interesting as other songs, right? You know, sure. but I do like the song, but just, you know, like you said, I was just kind of like, oh, people really like that song. Mm-hmm. But um, I thought, I thought Cement would pop more. Hmm. I thought that song was a fucking smash your face in ass beater, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the sense that the bass line is just so beast. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, like I said, that didn't, I, I don't think sonically, sonically that album really turned out how we wanted it to. So, 
not, you know, I'm sure people wouldn't have really liked it, even if it did at the time, because it was such a 180 from, from the youth songs. You know what I'm saying? So, Got you. Um, but, you know, I think that in taking that risk, um, it kind of cemented Citizen in a different way than other bands. Mm-hmm. So Was that an intentional pun? No, it was that. Yeah, there you go. I'm so smart. <laughs> I'm so smart. It was. Yeah. I love that. Um, so one of the last um, uh, topics that I want to hit on before we start to head towards the close is, you know, anyone that knows you knows that you're into, you know, working out, lifting, getting swole. And what I mentioned earlier is that, like, um, Citizen was kind of on this wave of, like, hardcore adjacent you you guys could play pop punk shows or fests or or tours or things like that and as as someone that was like like pop punk was kind of like my bread and butter when i was like first getting into like diy music and it was like i would look at all the other vocalists and i'm like and then i would see you i'm like everyone else is a toothpick compared to matt and so it was like was that ever a weird thing where like people would come up to be like, you're so strong because they would be watching real friends or newfound glory. And it would be kind of like, whatever. Um, but like, it's, it sounds like working out in gym stuff has always just been a part of just like second nature to you. Yeah. I, I was working out, you know, before I started citizen, it was just like, I was just obsessed with it, you know? And, um, I do think in like some weird, maybe minuscule, but hilarious, still hilarious way that me working out has aided in the attention that Susan has gotten in a way, <laughs> just solely because, because that was always, that was always the conversation. Like, whoa, like you, you're up there singing those songs. You, you, you got biceps, you know, or like whatever, you know, like whatever they say. Right. And you know, and I'm not even that, I'm not even like that big. Like people, people always are like, you're fucking huge. And it's like, I'm not like, if I have a shirt on and I'm standing next to another person, I, I look totally normal. You know, like I'm like totally normal sized. I'm not, you know, but when you work out, it's the out, ratios, you get, man. It's the ratio. When, when you, <laughs> When you get when you when you get muscle definition and you take a shirt off, that's when you look as drool. I drool all the time. But you take that's that's when you you look a little different, you know. Because I specifically remember this one encounter of uh, me, my friend, me and my friend Mike is in 2015, and I was very small. I was very small. Um, I was I think I was one. 70 165 pounds i'm i'm only five nine my height and uh i was very small but i was i was literally the most muscular shredded i've ever been i was in very very good shape and and uh he made a comment to me about it he's like oh you're looking small man and i was like yeah yeah you know i'm not eating as much i'm still I'm stronger than I've ever been though, you know, whatever. And then we had this, like, we were on warp tour in 2015 and we were like working out of the trailer and he's like, we got to get a pump pick. And I was like, of course we got to get a pump pick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> so, you know, so we, we, we get all pumped up and then we both take our shirts off and I'm significantly smaller than him, but in the photo, I look way bigger than him oh, because interesting. <laughs> Because you have more muscle definition. You know what I'm saying? So right. um, I don't remember how I got on that. But yeah, people would people would be like, you're, you're so big. You're so big. And it's like, I'm actually not. I'm like not that. <laughs> I'm like really not that big. You know what I'm saying? So I just think that in like the, the pop punk emo, whatever you want to call it, scene, um, nobody – nobody lifted weights now working out is a huge thing. mma is a huge thing you right. know like like it's it's mainstream it's everybody's doing it now everybody's olympic weightlifting powerlifting is huge like 
Everybody, everybody loves it. But I was just doing that a little bit before the wave. So it kind of like, you know, maybe worked in our favor a little bit. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to sound conceited or anything, but like, it just, I just noticed that like people would be like, whoa, you know? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what, dude? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I, I think that it definitely brought some, uh, attention to us and uh you know at least in some small capacity and, right um but yeah everybody's working out now it's not yeah. it's not anything crazy at all you know? yeah i i think that there is always like something that gets overblown but it's like it's still kind of like a not like overblown but it's still like that is like a unique thing where you know um where it kind of like sets a band out just a little bit apart from the rest of the pack like like when I was first getting into heavy music and the fact that like August Burns Red would wear flip flops, like when they would play shows, like that was like ludicrous to people at the time. Right. Yeah. I mean, people but it's like, like care. They're just fucking, it's good for their feet. I don't know. Like, they're just wearing flip flops. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what, be, people, you know, and especially in music, I guess, like, People like characters and, um, you know, y you, you'd have the goofy front man that's really crazy and funny. Then you'd have the tortured guy that's doing backflips on stage and smashing his face with the mic. And, and then you had Citizen who was like the normal guy that was like a little muscular. You know what I'm saying? Like it was almost <laughs> like that was like my like unintentional character you yeah, know what yeah. i'm saying and it, it you know like and then august burns red jake lurs wearing flip-flops you know whatever you know like yeah. i don't know so i think yeah i don't know I, I i think that's all kind of funny so yeah i i do agree that like ma people will unintentionally like pair things to be and i don't know like sometimes you can either like push against that or you can just choose to run with it like for me like i would always like like to drink like becoming like the Bev guy of like my local scene or just like hardcore is like something that just kind of happened. And then I just like leaned into it. Just you're like, you're the, you're the craft beer guy or you're like the fancy beverage in general. I, I like my handle on, on Twitter is Bev check God. And I hold that proudly. Oh so. wow. Okay. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hell so, yeah. Okay. Like the thing is like, I, like I, we'll go to a show and I want to have something I've like played shows where I like would open up a can of liquid death and like throw it just out of just like, that's just like what's going that's through your, my head. That's your character. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah right? I've like, yeah, yeah. Uh, most recently a, a week ago, I was at a fest in, in Tulsa and, and we rode up with the band because uh, we flew to Houston and we drove up with them. And I slammed, I was like, I slammed a Red Bull just before they went on because i and i was like i need to go out for this band because they like drove uh drove us up so i think like and they're like a db punk band so they don't really have like here's the fucking like riff that yeah. you're gonna like kill someone but they have like a couple <laughs> songs that like stop and it's just like a guitar kind of chug yeah. so one of those happened and i think i like got on stage and just out of like i was just like i saw red i like drank the rest of the red bull crushed it on my head and then like threw it into like into the crowd. Like I was just, I went into that animal animalistic kind of mode. So you're fucking tough, dude. I'm, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> Anyone listen to this is like, so that's just not. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. So I'll, I'll shout out to uh Mexican Coke. Uh, those are, those are the homies from Houston that uh, cool. got a little crazy for. Um, so if you open your fridge, is it just fancy, fancy drinks everywhere, or do you? Or Normally, do you have like a sprite. Do you have like a sprite in there? You know what I'm saying? Ah, uh, like I don't know. For me, a basic bev would be like a Lacroix. You know, like that's an basic. Aha. Yeah, basic, I, like basic, or are you talking <laughs> about like basic necessity? <laughs> well, I think it's like. I feel it's a basic necessity, but when I'm checking it on the podcast and I'm not checking this fancy like craft beer, like that becomes like I feel I feel ashamed. I'm not living up to my time. 
<laughs> like I'm so fucking embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, and I, I, I like to to talk about this a little bit, but like, so I just moved houses recently, and there was a time where I had a full flat of Liquid Death delivered, and it like lined the back of my office, and I have one on route. So there should probably be more in the wow. background for future episodes. So you get you get the you get the carbonated kind and the flavored kind and stuff. So oh, we don't okay. have the flavored in Canada. Oh really? Wow. Yeah, it's a shame. Wow. Yeah, dude, I hate carbonated water. Okay. How, how does that make you feel? <laughs> uh, no, I like it's valid, but I, I just I cannot. I've tried it so many times in LaCroix and I'm just like, oh, I just, I cannot get with it. And I, and that's the thing is I like want to be cool and I want, <laughs> and I want to, to be a, a LaCroix drinker and shit. But you want to be a LaCroix boy. I, I do. And it, I want to feel fancy and cool and I just can't, you know? Well, you mentioned Sprite. So do you drink like Coke or I, any of Yeah. Dr- I'm a pop drinker for sure. Well, that's that's pretty much the same thing, but just no syrup. Yeah, but the syrup is <laughs> the syrup's that good shit, <laughs> and and it's really good for you too. So it's like I gotta drink it. That's you fair. know, that's fair. Yeah. Um Do you know uh, James from Harm's Way, the singer? Of the I band? know. I I've met him a single time. We don't really know each other, but I do know that he's a massive Coke drinker. Have you been right? watching his Coke reviews on his Instagram? No, I have not. You but a need few people, to. I've seen a few of them. They, they they've been for they're they're pretty they're pretty funny to be honest. Yeah, the fact that he's reviewing not different flavors of Coke, but like Coca Cola in different situations, in different like this one's at a gas station, this one's at a McDonald's, yeah. and just like reviewing the ice cubes and the straw and the like. That's that's a niche that I will subscribe to forever. Yeah, so, that's pretty good. That's pretty genius, to be yeah, honest. <laughs> very much so. Um, so we got on a bit of a tangent, but uh, talking about muscles and working out, uh, I wanted to cool challenge stuff. you. If you were going to create the perf the the forever like Matt workout music playlist. But you could only choose bands who you have lifted with. Because I know you've mentioned on podcasts that on Warp Tour or different things, you've like lifted with those bands. Give me three bands that would be on that playlist. But you've had to have lifted with them in the past. Easy. Easy. Okay. Trapped, trapped Under Ice, Turnstile, Missing Link. Boom. Okay. Everybody's jacked. <laughs> Everybody's jacked. <laughs> Trapped under ice, especially. Right. I'm always listening to Trapped Under Ice when I'm at the gym. Right. That shit is awesome. You know? And missing link missing link is so you put turnstile in there so you get the flavor, right? Right. Trapped under ice so you get the motivation and uh determination, right? Yeah. And then you get missing link for the the pure the pure anger. You know? Right. Have you ever listened to Missing Link? They put out a new song recently, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've listened to that. It slays. It's awesome. Yes. Missing Link. They're putting out a new EP in, in a few days. And they're, they're a very good band. That's so. sick. Who, yeah. who, who's a band that people would be surprised that you have lifted weights with? Um... AFI. Really? Yeah, with Davey. Um, I've lifted with Anthony Green a few times. I mean, I've toured with Circa and him. Yeah. Um, Riff Raff was supposed to lift with me before, but he bailed uh, twice. He bailed twice. Twice? Oh, twice. Okay. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an anti Riff Raff podcast now. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he bailed two times. And you know we we were disappointed, man. Because what's the situation with lifting with Riff Raff? Not so once, but twice. A, he was on Warp Tour. When oh, Susan was on okay, 
Okay. And this was when he was doing steroids and just fucking, he was juiced out of his mind, right? Right. And uh, we had, I brought a lot of weights on Warped Tour. I had like a pretty cool setup. And uh, I mean, there's nothing to do on Warped Tour. I would literally work out all day, which is horrible for you, by the way. But that's what I would do, <laughs> you know? And, uh, <laughs> and um, one time he, he like rolled up with this his redwood forest tree fucking security guard. And he like walked up to us and he's like, uh, like, can I work out with y'all? And I, and Rylan says, was like, yeah, let's do it. We're working out right now. And he was like, no, tomorrow. We're like, okay. And he's like, take my number. So he gave his number to Rylan. Oh, okay. And so Rylan texted him. The next morning, I was like, hey, what time do you want to lift? And he was like, 12 or whatever it was. So we were all like, okay, Riff Raff's going to work out with us. This is hilarious and awesome. <laughs> so we got out all the weights. We like set it up all nice. Yeah, yeah. So organized. And we were like, all right. Didn't show up. And we were like, oh, we were all pissed. And then he comes walking by. And he's like, oh, yeah, sorry. You know, sorry. Tomorrow, like, I just got wrapped up. Like, okay, okay, cool. So what time tomorrow? Oh, three, you know, whatever time. Right. Okay, cool. Tomorrow comes. We're all excited. We same, set up the gym, set up the gym. <laughs> doesn't show up again. And then from then on out is avoiding us. Not because he's scared. I'm sure he's not scared. He just doesn't. He's just like, I bailed on him twice and... Fuck those guys. I'm sure is how he felt. You know what I mean? They probably beefed me, so I beefed it. I don't know how he's feeling, <laughs> but all I know is he did not look at us anymore. He just and we were like, ah, oh, riff raff. Come on, man. We could have been huge together. <laughs> huge. Yeah. <you know? laughs> Do you realize what we could have done? Right. Well, yeah. if anyone on riff raff's team is listening, um. Yeah there's a redemption arc that's building here. So yeah, yeah. I would love to see a citizen riffrap, you know, gym session. You and know, Jake, Jake Lurz was lifted with us too. A lot. I, Jake Lurz, I guess not at, at this point in life, but at one point I would have considered him a very good friend and mm-hmm. not that we had a falling out or anything. He just, he fucking lives in Pennsylvania and, um, you just never see, never yeah. see him anymore. You know, so yeah. But he's I, Jake. I love that guy. He's one of the coolest. Way people. cooler than Riff Raff. Significantly, <laughs> worlds cooler. <laughs> Jake would never bail. Yes. If Jake says he's gonna do it, he would be there. You know? Yeah. Well. Which yeah. he was. So there yes. we go. Yeah, I didn't think we would shit talk Riff Raff on this podcast, but here we are. <laughs> um, man, I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's gonna care a lot. Yeah, I'm sure I'm gonna get really, a DM as really soon rich. as we yeah. upload this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take that down. Um, yeah, right. maybe one of the last questions on that subject that I can ask you, Matt, for all the touring, uh, you know, heads that are like wanting to get like a really lean and perfect, like you know, weight system when they can pop it in the van or the trailer what are like where does your mind go with like either a couple items or like a, a few things that are your must when it comes to being on the road and and doing that shit in terms of fitness is what you're talking about yeah so um i bring in and this isn't necessary i guess but for i have dumbbells that are like they go from five pounds to 90 pounds each so those are awesome for me because I, if I don't, if the way, the way I work out and the way I respond best is I I have to have like decently heavy weight or else I'll just shrink. Mm -hmm. I I can't, some people can do push ups all day and they're fucking pumped up and they're in shape and they get jacked that way. Like I can't, like if I do that, I'll fall off and I have to be able to like rep a good, a good weight, you know? And so I bring those, um, a protein powder, a good quality one, an isolate or hydrolyzed. I don't know how to say that. To oh, be okay. Hyd- hy- hydrolyzed. 
hydrolyze, hydrolyze, I don't know. <laughs> um, stay hydrated, so water, which you don't have to bring, I guess. But and I, what I've been doing lately is uh, Epic bars. Oh. I've. Do you know what Epic bars are? I don't think so. They're literally in you know if you're vegetarian or vegan you can't, but they're literally just like meat bars. And uh, it'll be like bison or deer jerky or chicken. And uh, I watched a bunch of reviews on them because I was like, there's got to be a catch to this, you know? And there's like some, there's some guys that uh, go through like um, meal replacement bars and they're like, yep, this, these are the things you want to look for. This is bullshit, 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 you know? And they're like, it's like pretty unbiased. And this guy that I trust a lot pulled up an Epic bar and he's like, these things are fucking sweet. Look at the ingredients, blah, 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 blah. Nothing in here that you don't really want, you know? And I was like, huh? Hmm. So before the tour, I bought three months worth or not three months worth. That was a lie. (laughs) That was a lie. I just lied. I like to lie. So that's another thing about, that's another thing about me. I love lying, but I bought two months worth. And, uh, yeah, and they were awesome. So, yeah, so, Epic Bars. But I think the, the most important and that, thing. And that's, a, that's not an ad. That's just your genuine experience. That's not an ad. I am yeah. in no way. I bought those Epic Bars at full price. I'm in no way, <laughs> no way affiliated, you know. But, um, yeah. But, you know, the, I think the most important thing is to, to be mobile on tour. Like, aside from. You can take all the supplements you want in the world, and but if you're not if you're not like putting in the time to do a ten fifteen minute body weight, like you gotta do something, right? And even even if you don't care about being muscular, you don't care you you don't care like for your well being, like you should move a little bit, you know. And I've even people in Citizen, I'm I've blown away that that they don't like walk, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. Like they don't, it's just like, Oh, you, well, I mean, you know, they like, it's just like, how do you guys not do anything? And you just, feel, I feel horrible. If I'm sitting in a van all day and then I get out, I feel awful. You know, I'm like, I have to like get some blood flowing and I have to do something right now if I like want to feel normal. But right. I don't know if, you know, I, I don't know if that stems from the fact that I've always been working out or maybe the other guys, this is, are just, they're just different. Maybe they're just <laughs> so fucking internally jacked. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. But I, I think that that's really important because, you know, sitting around you, you when you rest, you rot. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can get a fucking endorsement or sponsorship from these from Epic, Epic bars. bars. Yeah. Like that would, any, that would be Epic. You're, you're singing their praises. So if anything, they should hook you up with a coupon code of some kind. So I would love a, a coupon code. So yeah, if, if Epic is watching or listening or whatever, I would like a coupon code. Yeah. Uh, citizen for 15% off. Yeah, yeah, Let's there make we go. It happen. Yeah, um, there we go. So, Matt, uh, this has been a fantastic conversation. Uh, really, just like really easy to talk to you and just like flowed super naturally. Um, the very last question I ask everyone who comes on the podcast is to end the show with a favorite mosh related story. And that could be anything that's first to your mind. It could be gruesome, wholesome. It could have happened to you or you did it or just at a random show that you were attending. Whatever is the first year head is how we start to end towards the clothes. So a, a pretty, a family friendly one <laughs> is like, so I, I, I haven't moshed in, I don't know, eight years. It's been so long. Right. And, um, but everybody in restraining order, I'm really good friends with Zach who was playing in restraining order on that tour, especially he, uh, he actually played, I did a solo tour. I just got back from a solo tour a few days ago. Right. And he was playing bass for my, so he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. And, um, on that Western Canada tour, um, 
all the dudes in restraining order would be like stage diving to citizen and like singing and they're just going off for us. You know, it was just kind of, it's pretty cool. And then, so we ended the tour in Toledo, which is a citizen hometown show in this really small venue, 200 cat venue called the Ottawa Tavern. It's like where most of the shows are. Okay. So it was going to be crazy. And, um, we collectively decided this and we we're like, all right, we, we all have to mosh to restraining order. So <laughs> we got to do it, you know? So I moshed for the first time and for the first time, and keep in mind, like when I'm moshing, it's like, it's mainly like running and jumping and kind of push, you know, I was, it's, I've never been much of like a hardcore dancer, but like, uh, yeah. man, I moshed for, I don't know, 20 seconds. And I felt like I was going to fucking die. I was like, <laughs> I was like, holy shit. I don't know what is different about fucking moshing, but I could do Muay Thai and I could do pad rounds. And granted, I'm pretty fucking tired after I'm sparring or doing pad rounds, but that was different. It was like this like crazy burst of energy out of nowhere. And then when it was over, it was like your body was still in fight or flight mode and my heart rate was like... And I was literally like... Like having to like collect myself. You're like there's like, a reason I, I don't do this. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I do not remember this feeling at all. And I feel horrible right now. But then I, I kept, you know, throughout the set, kept doing it occasionally. And it got a little better every time. But yeah. my uh maybe, you know, my age was showing a little bit. And I <laughs> I, I don't necessarily think twenty-eight or thirty, thirty-five years. I, I don't really think that that's old at this point, but like I just feel like, man, when I was 18, I could, I could just do anything. Mm. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when you're, I could have jumped off of this house head first, landed on my neck, and I would have stood up and, like, went and took a shit. Yeah. And anyway, I would have been fine. You know what I'm saying? But, like, right. now, <laughs> the other day I was deadlifting. Deadlifting and... I wasn't bracing my core enough, and then I felt like a little shock in my back, and I dropped the weight, and then for a second, I was like, oh, my God, I think I fucking hurt my spine. You know what I'm saying? I was, like, kind of frozen up. Luckily, I I was fine. I, I think I just kind of pulled a muscle in my lat a little bit, but I was like, whoa, I got I to, gotta like, be careful now. I'm getting a little bit older, and I sit in a van for too long, and I'm... I'm like fucking hobbling out of the van. Like I'm 90 years old. You know what I'm saying? It's just <laughs> kind of crazy. So yeah, when, when I moshed for the first time and however long, and I felt like I was going to literally die. I was like, Whoa. Right. Yeah. So that's probably, uh, that's my most recent moss story. That was a few months, ago. Okay. a few months ago. At this point. Well, so. it, yeah, it's funny you say all that. Cause it's like, uh, we played a show uh, this this past Thursday, and uh, I was telling the guys like playing in bands and like doing all this shit like makes me feel younger than the, that I actually am. And I know I'm not like super super old compared to like you know there's people who are in the scene who are like 35, you know, even pushing cl- closer to 40. But it's like sometimes when I like I hear like certain uh, music parts, it just like makes me is like okay, like it actually like puts you into that like just super energized mode and you just like feel like you're 18 yeah. and you can kind of do anything but you know there that's awesome there is a there is a cost when, when we are like in that back half of the of the 20s and then it's like oh shit i'm like really feeling it and i need that yeah yeah. Path, so. <laughs> yeah 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 you, you go off for a second and then the next day you're like my fuck fucking hips yeah why are my hips so tight you know yeah yeah <laughs> why are my hips so tight yeah uh yeah. well matt again this has been really fun all of your social links and your music links will be in the description and in the show notes but if there's anything you want to shout out anything you want to plug or anything you want to send the people off with before we wrap up the floor is yours uh shout out to uh missing link and their new their new ep and uh, shout out to uh, Central Athlete, Stephen Frisch, and uh, Iron Chain Fitness, Zek. 
Macintosh. So yeah, that that's it. Cool. <laughs> I wasn't sure because I know you're looking at the camera, but I don't know if you have another I have, thing. I have two screens. Oh, I and see. This, the screen I usually use is this one. And then my laptop is right here. I got you. So I keep like getting caught. I'm like looking at you when I, whenever I like look up here, I'm like, I'm looking at you right now, mm -hmm. but like my camera is on my laptop right here. So right. I keep like resorting to what I'm used to. Sometimes I'm like looking up here and then I have to be like, yeah. Oh, wait. well, I have done interviews where people are talking to me like this and it like, I have to yeah. push through it, but it's like, this feels way more natural. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, well, well, hey, this, this, I'll give another shout out. This was a very good podcast and you're very good oh, at what you do. So. Dude, thank I've you. done, I've done so many horrible interviews and podcasts and especially shit where, you know, like the person clearly doesn't give a shit and they just like <laughs> want you on there and they don't know anything. You know what I'm saying? So this is very good. So you, you, you keep killing it, dude. You know what I'm saying? I, I really appreciate that. Those kind of words. Um, and, and, I don't just say this because you're on the podcast, Matt, but like, I, I think that if we're looking at the entire timeline of like, you know, like DIY music, I think that Citizen, when it comes to like the alternative uh, and the, you know, hardcore Jason kind of like, I think you guys have influenced a lot of, of new bands and have created some like undeniable art um, over the years and, and continue to do so. So it was an absolute pleasure to have you on and yeah. Thank you again for coming on the podcast, bro. That's very nice. Thank you. I'm very glad that we're here, you know? Yeah. So.